In case you missed it, on April 8th, 2024 this year, there is going to be a total solar eclipse that much of the United States is going to experience. We just happen to be so lucky to live in the path of totality, which means we're going to have a couple of minutes of total darkness here in Texas. So today I'm gonna walk you through the gear I'm going to use and the settings I'm going to use in order to capture this incredible celestial event. If you happen to be in the path of totality, I would highly recommend you get your butt outside and try to experience it because the next total solar eclipse isn't going to happen until August of 2044. I'm gonna be pretty old by then. But before we dig into all of the things we're gonna to cover today, I have to drop the safety notification that if you plan to look at the sun, do not do it without rad glasses like these. And furthermore, if you plan on photographing this event, do not point your camera directly at the sun without the proper filter, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. All right, digging into the gear that you're going to need to photograph a total solar eclipse. This is all just a suggestion. There are some flexibility, but a few things that are non-negotiable. First and foremost, a camera, preferably a DSLR or mirrorless camera with high megapixels, because we'll talk about the size of the sun and how it shows up in your frame in just a second. But the higher the megapixel, your camera, the more you can crop in in post-processing. So in my case, I'm using the Sony a7R 4 which is an absolute beast when it comes to megapixels. Your next piece of gear, let's talk about a lens. As I just mentioned, with having high megapixels, another way to fill up a frame is using a telephoto lens. So on the day of the total solar eclipse, I'm gonna be using this Sigma 150 to 600. And here you can see on this website, a wonderful demonstration of various focal lengths of how big the sun will actually appear in frame. So for me, I'm gonna shoot for around 400 millimeters because I really wanna capture that beautiful moment of totality with the sun rays kind of beaming off from the side. So in order to get me there, again, I'm using this monster, the 150 to 600. The next piece of gear you'll definitely wanna have is a tripod. Having your camera set up and running on its own is going to really allow you to sit back and enjoy the event for yourself rather than manually fiddling with your camera ever so often. So in order to have your camera run on its own, I also recommend an intervalometer. This is just a cheap, awesome piece of kit that you should add to your camera bag. Now for a mandatory piece of gear, in order to photograph the sun, you have got to have some form of a solar filter. So here I'm partnering with KNF Concept using their ND uh, 1 million filter. So this thing is going to block out all of the harmful UV rays and protect my camera's sensor from being essentially fried by the sun. Be sure to click the link below in order to pick up one of these filters for yourself. As I mentioned before, another piece of mandatory gear are these super cool solar eclipse glasses. Be sure if you look at the sun at all, you have these on until the moment of totality. So at that point, you can actually take them off, but as soon as the sun begins to eclipse past the moon again, be sure to pop them back on. Now, an optional piece of gear that I am going to try to use is going to be a tracker. So what this is going to allow me to do is to have this honking massive lens on my tripod, and essentially it is going to allow my camera to follow the path of the sun. So my sun will be center of frame, throughout the entirety of the event. I can then edit them however I want in post-processing, but this just allows me to get really zoomed in with this telephoto lens here and track and not have the sun go out of frame. Now that we've got the gear out of the way, let's talk about settings. I know I had to honestly look this up myself. I'm used to shooting Milky Way photography, the moon, but never the sun, so let's dig into it. First and foremost, and I think this goes for just about any form of photography, 
be sure you shoot in raw. This is going to give you the most flexibility in post-processing in order to pull out some of that beautiful detail from the sun. Starting with our ISO, we actually are going to need a relatively low ISO number, but depending on your lens and camera combination, this could be anywhere from 100 up to about 400. Now, what I'm gonna actually do here after this, I can't recommend you do this enough as well, take some practice shots, understand how your camera performs in your backyard the day before the event or leading up to, so you're not trying to figure this out the day of. So ISO, start anywhere from 100 to 400. As for aperture, I'm personally going to lean in to F8. That's going to allow us to capture a lot of detail and also jives well with this particular lens. So again, depending on your combination, that could fluctuate, but I'm going to start with F8. Now, as for shutter speed, I'm actually gonna step out in the yard and I'm gonna lock in my ISO of 100. I'm gonna have F8 dialed in, and then I'm going to meter and figure out my shutter speed based on this combination. And again, with my particular lens. So let's take a look and how we do that. So in order to find the sun first, because I am at such a big focal length, I'm gonna start at 150 millimeters to get the sun in frame first. There it is. Now, once I find it, I've got my focus point in the center of my frame. I'm gonna lock my camera in place. Now at this point, I'm gonna zoom into my desired focal length, which is going to be 400 millimeters for the event. And a tip, if you have a telephoto lens like this, a lot of them have a locking mechanism on the side. Anything you can do to prevent bumping or moving a camera during an event like this is critical. So for my total eclipse day, I'm going to lock my lens in place. Now to start, how do we focus on the sun? The camera's gonna have a really tough time finding it. So we're gonna need to switch to manual focus. And what we're gonna do to start is focus on the outer perimeter or the, the edge of the sun. What I'm gonna do is do a digital zoom and you'll notice some sunspots. So here is where you can fine tune that focus even more to make sure you get all that awesome detail. So now let's take some test shots. Never did I ever think I'd be photographing the sun. This is ridiculous. Now some additional things to take note of leading up to totality, right? So when it's going to be pitch dark, your exposure settings are likely going to need to change. So keeping an eye on your meter is going to be critical, especially during the, the moment of totality or moments of totality, it's gonna get really dark. So what can actually be very beneficial is bracketing. So you can pull out all of that critical detail in post-processing. Now, speaking of totality and when it gets the darkest, you're gonna wanna leave your solar filter on the entire time the eclipse is occurring until that moment of totality. This filter, with how dark it's going to be, it's not gonna work. So be sure once the sun is totally eclipsed, remove your solar filter, take your bracketed images, and as soon as the sun starts to crest on the other side of the moon, pop this solar filter back on to protect your sensor. All right, y'all, that does it for this video. I'm wishing you clear skies and an incredible total solar eclipse experience. If you have any additional tips, please feel free to drop them below. This is a totally new event for me as well. So I hope you found this information provided helpful in order for you to fully photograph and capture the total solar eclipse. Do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe as well. It really helps the channel and allows me to continue creating content like this. But again, wishing you clear skies, happy shooting, and a wonderful total solar eclipse. Do you hear how complicated this is? I'm, I'm like really stressed out about it. Today, we're talking about a total solar eclipse of the heart.